like my cat. When he wants attention, he just comes and gets it. When I pet him too much, he stands up and he walks away. Today we're going to talk about unfulfilled expectations in a relationship. Because think about it, have you ever had expectations of your partner and not had them filled? It's annoying, isn't it? But what if people aren't actually communicating what they need? Are you? I'm Dawn, I'm a relationship expert. Let's run the show reel and we'll talk about this in just a minute. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges I see with people, whether it's a friend relationship, a family relationship, or an intimate relationship, is that we create expectations for another person without communicating it. People don't ask for what they need. In fact, not only do they not ask for what they need or what they want, they see something or they make up a story in their head about what's happening or not happening what the other person should be doing or not doing, that they are doing. And in their head, they have this whole conversation. And instead of being curious and communicative and asking for what we want and we need, what happens instead is we make up a story, a story about what the other person's thinking, feeling, how they're gonna respond to us, what they're gonna say or not say, for example, I got a text from somebody just the other day saying, well, goodbye. It's obvious that you don't want to hang out anymore. It's obvious you don't care about me. And I was like, I have no idea what brought this on or what you're talking about. But it happened to be that I had had a huge family issue just a couple of hours earlier and I was emotionally vulnerable and really upset. So instead of being curious, which I normally am and saying, hey, what's going on? What's up with the text? I totally attacked and was like, well, fine. If you don't want to talk to me anymore, there's nothing else I can do. I'm obviously too busy. I'm obviously not enough. So whatever. And I blew them off. And then I got a text back telling me what they were thinking, what they observed, things that they put together from what I had said that weren't actually true. In fact, the story that they wrote in that text wasn't actually what was going on in my life. It was an amalgamation of things I had said that created a whole different storyline than what reality was. So instead of being curious and asking me a question like, hey, I thought we were gonna talk. You said you were gonna reach out a couple of weeks ago and you didn't, what's going on? They just assumed I didn't care. And they made up a whole story about it. I made up a whole backstory about it based upon what I was doing on social media. Have you ever done this to a friend or family member where you reached out with an expectation of how they were going to respond in return and they didn't quite respond in the way that you anticipated? It's pretty common in relationships. So this is why no matter what kind of relationship you're working with, it's really important to just be curious what's going on or state what you need. Get out of your stories in your head because every story you create in your head is actually your own brain, your own mind, your own reactivity. And so the conversations that you have between yourself and your family members or the, yourself and your significant others are actually all you, not them. So of course they're going to react differently when you talk to them. And now you've created an expectation about how they're gonna react so you can feel the way that you want to feel. And when they don't fulfill that expectation, it can create a trigger or can create hurt or pain or grief or sometimes joy, right? So imagine now, instead of making up a story about what's going on with the other person, that you get curious. You state what you need clearly and effectively what your unneed expect, unmet expectations were, what your needs are, what you were hoping for. Be a little bit vulnerable. Or if it doesn't feel comfortable to be vulnerable, then reach out and say, hey, I thought we were gonna have a conversation. What happened? I'm curious. Because now you're coming at it with openness. You can be clear, centered. You can give the other person even time to realize their mistake and, and honor you with an apology or honor you with an admission of like, oh my gosh, I am sorry. Or, hey, this is what I need you to know. Or, hey, maybe I wasn't as clear as what I thought. Maybe my communication was a little bit off. And now, imagine, as you're curious, 
you actually get what you need instead of saying something and expecting somebody to respond in a certain way, especially when you're over text or especially when you're on social media or you haven't talked to somebody in a long time or especially when you're angry or upset. Because wouldn't you rather get what you need than create more conflict and more anger and perhaps lose a relationship that's valuable to you? Comment below, just with a yes or no. Have you ever had somebody react in a way that you weren't anticipating to a story that you made up in your own head? Or when you reached out to somebody hoping for an answer and you got something different? Subscribe if this was valuable for you. I'd love to give you more relationship tips because after all, you are love, you are loving, and you are lovable, and you deserve to have good, happy, healthy, communicative relationships. Thanks for watching.